Welcome to Britain's favourite Sunday sermon. What a week! Unbelievable scenes in the House of Commons. What's going on? Here we have the Speaker bending the rules in fear of the security of MPs, depending on which way they vote, on tiny tweaks and changes to the wording of an amendment to a motion about an international matter that, yes, is serious, but will make no difference whatsoever to the outcome. All of this time and energy and anger emoted, people screaming and hollering outside on Parliament Square. Whilst this is going on, all of this obsessing over the small minutiae of these words. Where's the obsession amongst MPs? Actually, how to make life better in the United Kingdom for their constituents? Because I've just released yesterday a document that shows the scale, the unbelievable quantities of money that are being wasted, thrown away, utterly, utterly incompetent spending, unnecessary spending, taxpayers' cash, by the establishment, by the government, and no one seems to care. Let me just give you a couple of examples. The Governor of the Bank of England has decided voluntarily that they should pay base rate interest on all of the money that was printed, the, what they call the quantitative easing money. It's about £35 billion pounds a year. The ECB's not doing it. The Swiss Central Bank's not doing it. The Bank of Japan's not doing it in this way. And yet, voluntarily, it seems the Bank of England's quite happy to transfer £35 billion pounds of taxpayers' cash to the rich city institutions who, surprise, surprise, have just this week announced, yes, record multi-billion profits on the back of this voluntary transfer of cash. This is the greatest act of financial negligence by a civil servant, someone who's paid by the taxpayer. It is unbelievable. And yet no discussion whatsoever by the MPs. Why? They don't understand it. They haven't got a Scooby-Doo of a clue. Thirty-five billion pounds this year alone. Another matter that I raised yesterday in this document that I've just launched, what I call a contract with you, is the small matter of the cost of net zero. Again, Westminster obsesses with net zero. We've got to get to zero CO2 by 2050, they say. They have no idea why. They have no idea whether it'll work or not. They don't understand the numbers. And they have no idea how much this costs. Well, let me tell you, because we've done the numbers, we've looked at the advice, and we are being cautious about the numbers. Again, on an annual basis, every year, the cost of net zero to the public sector, and therefore taxpayers' cash, is at least £30 billion pounds a year. And yet, no discussion amongst the MPs is this a good use of taxpayers' cash? Is it going to make any difference? Where's the science? Why are other scientists saying, actually, you're doing the wrong thing in the wrong time frame at the wrong price? No, they're completely obsessed with this stuff. £30 billion, pounds, not just as a one-off, every year for the next 25 years. So those two matters alone, the voluntary, unnecessary payment of bank interest by the Bank of England to commercial banks on the printed money, 35 billion quid, and 30 billion quid every year on net zero. So that's 65 billion every year. What about saying, maybe we should use that some of that money instead for cutting taxes, for cutting unnecessary regulation, for making the economy grow? Because guess what? We're in recession. Almost no discussion about that. Where's their growth plan? 
I've got a growth plan. I put it forward yesterday, how you should be investing these sums. And yet the MPs, clueless, don't seem to care. Or maybe they just don't understand. It's truly unbelievable what's going on here. Where's the discussion amongst them? How do you get ambitiously to zero waiting lists? I've got a plan to get to zero waiting lists in two years. And I've got a big slug of money, 17 billion pounds, some of that 65 I've just talked about, that you can invest in independent healthcare on frontline staff, not to the bungling, incompetent NHS bureaucrats. No, 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 they shouldn't get any extra cash. They can't use properly the cash they've already got. But with my plan, we get to zero waiting lists in two years. Again, no discussion about that by the elected MPs. They're just obsessed about wording of a motion for an international matter that will make no difference whatsoever to the outcome. I think this stuff infuriates constituents who will be aghast at these sums of money that I've highlighted. And you end up, for example, with the simple choice. What would you rather... Would you rather zero waiting lists in two years or would you rather zero CO2 in 30 years? That is literally the sort of choice that we're facing. Because of these unbelievable sums being spent on the great holy grail of net zero. It doesn't matter how much you spend on it. It doesn't matter how many tens of thousands of decent skilled manufacturing jobs are slaughtered on the altar of net zero. Don't worry about that, folks. No, it's fine. As long as we get to zero CO2 in about 30 years. Don't worry about people dying on A&E corridors or in ambulances. Don't worry about the excess deaths. All of this stuff. No discussion. The complete and utter failure to have a sense of priority, an understanding of what's really going on why people are feeling poorer and colder. These are the reasons why. I've talked about it in this contract. I'm exposing it. Yet these people, utterly, utterly clueless. It's not surprising, sadly, we're in recession. There's no growth. And no one's got a plan for growth. I believe, except me. And that's what I've put forward. It's a serious plan. And yes, we've put it out there as a draft. Welcome comments. People will inevitably, of course, have some criticisms, maybe some corrections. That's fine. That's what you do in business. You put out a business plan to your senior team, you get comments, and then you update it, you tweak it, and you finalise it. I believe the country should be run properly, like a well-run, lean, efficient business with motivated employees and happy customers. I can't stand waste. I can't stand incompetence. Drives me absolutely bonkers. And what's happening at the moment is just a negligent tragedy for the United Kingdom. And with that, here endeth my Sunday sermon.